Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have another get ready with me video, but this time it's not gonna be the fast and the furious. We're gonna be uh, doing it more in real time, so it'll give you a chance to see more clearly which products I use. Um, I am doing the look that I'm wearing here, which is what I wore for my birthday, which happened recently, so yes. I am now 41 officially. So um, anyway, I was feeling just some pinks and purples to bring out my green eyes. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And without further ado, let's get started. To start off, I'm gonna do something I always forget to do is apply a little chapstick, or in this case, the um, Buxom lip gloss. I have several of these like in a smaller size. and. I like them. They give that little plumping action, but it's not too painful. At least I don't think so. So I like to start off with that with, for uh, my chapstick in the morning. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of primer. This is the First Aid Beauty coconut skin smoothie priming moisturizer so you know since I'm turning a year older decided a little extra moisturizer is probably a good idea <laughs> and I'm not really working too hard to put this into my skin but as always whenever you apply moisturizer or anything it kind of makes your skin get a little red but that's okay we're gonna fix it now I like to let that primer set just a few, like a minute or so. So I'm gonna go in with my primer for my eyes. This is the Smashbox 24 hour um, photo finish shadow primer. I know they have a couple different ones, but this is just my favorite. It's very dependable for me. Keeps my shadow on all day. And now because I don't want you to have to stare at my skin for like 10 minutes while we do the eyes, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with the face. And I'm gonna use a combination of um, these two shades from the EX1 foundation. Okay, I think that's a pretty good match. So I'm going to go in with my Sedona Lace Flat Top Brush, 928. Just quickly work that over my skin. So this foundation, when you put it on, it has a cooling, moisturizing feel to it. I just love it. And it doesn't make your skin look dry or cakey, but um, I also don't feel like it emphasizes pores or fine lines. I kind of go back and forth on favorite powders to use with this foundation, but um, I think I'm going to go back to this one. <clears throat> it's the Kat Von D Locket um, Translucent Setting Powder. And just going to, I'm just going to set the forehead for now um, where I have my lovely lines. <laughs> and also going to set the brows. And I've learned that if I do this, put some decent amount of setting powder through the brows, it helps my brow powder and pencil stay on a lot longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my brows now. I've been enjoying doing this because my brows are my least favorite thing to do. So I kind of feel like if I get them out of the way, I can enjoy the rest of my makeup application. And also if I'm running late, um, I'll know that my brows are done. I'm gonna start with the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in Ash Brown and go around the edge.
So now that I went around the edge, I'm going to fill in the brow with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Powder Duo. This is in soft brown. And I pretty much just used this light color. I'm going to use this brow definer brush from Bare Minerals. I love it for quick, fast application of powder. It's very stiff and it kind of almost brushes the brows up like a spoolie would while it's applying the powder. So this has just been my favorite way to do my brows lately. Now I'll set all of that in place with my NYX Control Freak Brow Gel. Just a clear gel that I think does a decent job. It's probably a medium hold. It's not like super glue for your brows. <laughs> it's not like the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel. But personally, I don't like crunchy brows. So this is just the right amount of hold. Okay, so for eyes, I'm going to be using some of my favorite shadows of late. And these are the ColourPop pressed shadows. So as you can see, I've been gravitating towards lots of pinks lately. Pinks, a little bit of purple, crazy purple. Um, so I have just been loving these colors, especially for my blue-green eyes. These colors really make them stand out. So I'm going to start off with a brow bone highlight color in... I better show you because <laughs> I got to get the name of it. Um, this is Full Zip. So this one has a little bit of a, a hint of more of a beigey yellowish tone. It's not yellow, but um, compared to this one right here, which has more of a pink tone, which is brighter. Um, so since my skin is a little bit more on the tan side right now, I don't like to go too light with my brow bone highlight. And now we're going to go in the crease with some of these pink colors. So on my birthday, I was just kind of messing around, playing, mixing a few. So I'm going to do this one and this one. And I'm using this fluffy Morphe M504. I love this brush. If you struggle with blending your shadows in your crease, you're gonna love this brush. And I'm holding it, the brush, like about midway down. So I have a whole video planned to talk more about blending and specifically for hooded eyes. So stay tuned for that. And then because it was my birthday and I just wanted to play around a little bit more, um, I went in with this soft um, yellow beige color. It's called Running Late on that same brush and just lightly tap it. And I'm going right on the edge of that pink. And it just warms it up a little bit, makes more of a gradient into that brow bone highlight. So, I mean, it's such a subtle difference, but I could tell <laughs> it made a slight difference just warmed it up just a little bit now I'm going to go in with this beautiful shade it is called get out um, and it kind of has a little more purple tones to it but still in the pink family so And I'm taking that on a Morphe M433 and just barely, I mean, you can see I'm just putting a little color. These shadows are so pigmented. Just want to slowly build, especially with these bright pink colors. And then go back with a little bit more of those two blending shades we used in the crease, the two pink colors. 
which I don't know that I told you what they are. <laughs> they are Dreamboat, which is more of the dusty mauve color, and the Nudes, which is a slightly warmer pink tone. And then on the outer corner on the upper lash line, I'm gonna use a combination of black eyeliner and this dark, dark purple from the, uh, this is the NYX Faux Blacks line in Black Hole. It's a really deep purple color. And then this is just a deluxe sample I got from Sephora of the Makeup Forever Black Liner. And I'm gonna start with that one close to the lash line. And then right above that, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the next one. It's a purple shade, you can see it looks really dark next to the black. And then we're going to blend those together with just a Sedona Lace, this is a 904. It's a pencil brush, kind of a stiffer pencil brush. And I'm just gonna really blend the edge of that to soften it slightly. We're gonna go over it with shadow. So it doesn't have to be perfectly blended. So now over the top of our smudged liner there, I'm going to go in with <clears throat> this um, Cloud Nine. Know the name of that one because I use it often. And I'm going to go right over where we placed that liner. And I'm not going to take it too much into the crease just right here and focused on the outer corner we're going to blend a little bit more with a different color so you know it's my birthday makeup so be prepared for a few more shadows than normal <laughs> okay and now on a slightly um smaller brush than the morphe one this is the e25 by sigma we're going to go in with a little bit of this crazy color and another crazy color. This is Stay Golden and this bright purple is 143. And I'm just going to tap my brush between those two and focus this right on the edge of that dark color and pulling it onto the lid slightly. And then I'm going to add a little bit of Cloud 9 on that same brush, just to darken it up. Then I'll go back with our M433, no additional product, we're just going to go along the edge of those colors. Okay, so now on the lid, first I'm going to start with the Urban Decay 24-7 Shadow Sticks. I don't even know if they make these anymore. I'm just going through some of my older makeup products trying to get rid of things. So you could use, um, Maybelline has a similar shade in one of their color tattoo shadows. You can use that. You can use... Just a light shimmery color. And now on one side of a flat shader brush, I'm going to go in with this beautiful um, plummy cranberry color. It does have shimmer, it's called Pinky Promise. And I'm going to put that on the middle, focus this on the middle of the lid, and then feathered outward just slightly. 
Oh, is that not just so pretty? Oh, love it. And this is similar to Max Cranberry Shadow, but I actually find this one a little more pigmented and slightly more on the pink side than Max Cranberry. And then on the other side of that brush, flip it over, we're gonna go in with a combination of come out, or what is it? Come and get it, and on the fence. So this is kind of like a shimmery silvery pink, and this is a pink with a little bit of gold, and the combination of those two, I just love. So just tapping my brush back and forth between those two and lightly shading that in the inner corner and then overlapping that pinky promise shade just lightly. And then one more time with our crease brush just around the edge. And this is why I like to do the shimmery shade on the lid last because if you're blending away, you usually blend away your lid shade, then you have to keep reapplying. Who has time for that? All right, so um, now we're gonna address the bottom lash line before we apply our um, liquid liner on top. So um, I'm gonna go back in with that NYX Faux Black um, Black Hole. And on my birthday, I did put this in the water line. Shoot, let's go ahead and do it. Sometimes I don't like to do this because it bothers my contacts throughout the day, but. We'll do it anyway. And then we're gonna smudge this a little bit under the lash line as well. And then I'm gonna take this flat definer, or what is it, precision eyeliner brush from Bare Minerals. A lot of people make these kind of brushes. We're gonna go back in with that shade 143. And I'm gonna tap this right on the actual edge of the lash line into pressing it into my lashes. This will help your waterline shadows stay longer and obviously it's going to make it a little more vibrant. And then I'm going to take that same shade under the lash line. And then on an e.l.f. pencil brush, I'm gonna go back in with this, yes, um, Dreamboat shade, and just touch that along the lower edge of that purple shadow, just to kind of make it look like it fades. Now, if you don't wear contacts, you can totally just blend away down here. If you don't have sensitive eyes like I do, and now for the final step before mascara, I'm gonna go in with my favorite Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Trooper. And this is the black color, and I'm just going right along the lash line about three quarters of the way in. You'll notice I do this a lot, because I like to give a more lifted look. <laughs> As we age, we're trying to lift everything, aren't we? All right, now it's time to clean up under the eye. And I'm going in with my almond oil on a Q-tip. And I just find this helps not only with the cleanup, but adds a little extra moisturizer to the under eye area before applying concealer. Now I just tap in the excess oil 
You don't want tons of oil down there. But just enough. And now I'm gonna go in with my Tarte CC corrector, and this is the darker shade. This is the medium tan shade. And when I don't use this, I really notice a difference. So I am just tapping on the tiniest amount. So I'm literally just tapping my finger like that. Tap on the areas of darkness and where I have really prominent veins down here. And then I'm gonna go in, this has been like my favorite concealer combination lately. It's with the Super Cheap Wet n Wild Concealer and I have this in more of my summer shade. It's the light medium beige. And then I just go in with the tiniest amount of Tarte Shape Tape and I have it in light neutral. Now this Shape Tape, you'll see girls like just plaster this all over like you know, use half the bottle on each eye. And um, yeah, if you're of mature skin, you can't do that because it definitely is more of a dry, it dries down. I mean, it's great coverage, but gotta be careful because it gets cakey fast. So then I combine that with this Wet n Wild concealer, which is a good medium coverage concealer, but on its own, I don't feel like it has quite enough um, coverage power, but it's a little more emollient. And I just use that to conceal any other areas around my face. Go back with my foundation brush and just tap that in. and then take my Real Techniques, um, what is this? Contour brush. <laughs> and use that to just lightly, gently blend and pat those dots together. And now to set the under eye, I'm going to use the tiniest amount of my e.l.f. HD translucent powder and I'm going to use this Real Technique sponge dry and I'm going to use the flat edge and just dip it in a little bit of that powder so bounce off the excess and just lightly tap and press that in and that's it not doing any baking for some of you who don't know what baking is it's not cake and cookies <laughs> it's where you um, you've probably seen it done here on YouTube where they take a ton of powder and put it over that area and let it sit and the heat from your skin mixed with that powder kind of makes this impervious barrier so it's supposed to keep it from creasing um, it keeps it in place, but if you have line, fine lines and wrinkles under your eye, it will make it super dry and cakey in no time flat. So that's not what we want. And then I'm going to take the edge, the tip of that with a little powder right along the edge of my shadow. I've been doing this recently just to make sure our shadow doesn't drift on the outer edge. And if you want, if you really struggle with that, um, you can take a flat definer brush like this, an angle brush, and either translucent powder, or you can go back in with your highlighter shade you used on your brow bone, and go right along the edge. This also is a way to just kind of sharpen that line a little bit. And I find that my liner out here, shadow, it does not go anywhere throughout the day if I do this. So, if you struggle with drifting shadow and eyeliner, try this trick. Let me know if it works for you. 
Okay, now we're gonna powder the rest of my face. We, I'm going to. <laughs> You're gonna watch. Um, I'm gonna go back in with my Kat Von D Locket Translucent Powder. And using that fluff, I'm gonna press this in. Not really baking, but I am using a little more powder than some. So if you have dry skin, you don't need to do this. But. I just like to take a big fluffy brush and brush off the excess. Now we're ready for some color. So for bronzer and contour, um, I think I'm gonna do all in one today, just from this Lorac Pro palette. As you can see, I've hit pan now on two shades. I love this, and even though I've hit pan, I've had it for quite like a year and a half. I don't use it every single day, but it is very, long lasting. So I'm going to go in with the light contour shade and the medium on this flat brush. This is Sedona Lace 316 and use this just for a little contour. And then before we blend that out, I'm going to take the Lorac brush that comes with the, this contour palette into the light contour shade and do my nose. Now I'm going to take my round top brush, this Sedona Lace FB05, and going to do um, mostly the medium contour shade and just blend now that contour into the temples and then back of my jawline and this is just how I contour the shape of my face. Everybody's face shape is different so you've heard me say before you gotta just contour according to your personal face shape. Yeah, I'm gonna do a slight little bit. I'm not gonna use this too much to bronze with because I'm going to use something else. I know, another product. But it's my birthday, right? Okay, so now for kind of a bronzed, a little more glowy look. And you know, because I want to feel fancy, extra fancy on my birthday, I'm gonna go in with this hourglass um, ambient light. Let's see, what is it? I think it's the radiant light shade. Um, it is kind of golden. Um, you know, it just gives your face just this imperceptible, well, slightly perceptible glow, but you can't really quite put your finger on what it's doing. It just makes your skin look pretty. <laughs> so, doesn't add a ton of color or anything, but just makes your skin kind of look more healthy or something. I don't know. You can probably see it. If you don't want to spend a boatload of money on this powder, the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer can give you a very similar look. So, all right, now for my blush, I'm going to use my birthday freebie from Sephora. Yay! This is the Tarte. It's Parte. <laughs> it's a really pretty kind of nude rose color. And these Tarte blushes 
I feel like nobody really talks much about them anymore because there's been so many other blushes, but these really do stay really well on the cheeks throughout the day and they swatch terribly. I'll just say that right now, but there's something about they pick up well on the brush. So if you're in the store and you're swatching, you're like, these are terrible. They're not. Um, but because they're so pressed, they're pressed in there so well, you don't get any kick up or anything. So you're able to better control how much you put on. So, and they have really good ingredients for your skin. Isn't that a pretty shade? Mm. I hope they come out with this in the full size because I think it would sell well. All right, and then for highlighter, what did I use? What, I think I'm gonna use a Tarte one. This one is Stunner. And the new Tarte um, bronzers and their um, highlighters, they smell kind of like the chocolate bar palette like they might have cocoa powder in them. So good. But this um, this highlighter is beautiful and it has a little more pink leaning to it, but it's not too cool. You have to be careful. If something is too white, too light, it doesn't look right with my skin tone. And I'm not gonna go crazy but you could with this highlighter you can really look like you're gleaming from space if you want to it's not really what I'm gonna do today and then I'm gonna take a little bit of that on my pinky for my inner corner And then take my um, pencil brush and just blend that in slightly. Now we just have to curl our lashes and apply mascara. So of course I want my lashes to look as great as they can. <laughs> so and apply my two favorite mascaras, the It Cosmetics Tightline and Superhero obviously do not need to do both but I love the combination of the two Okay, so now it's time for lips, and I'm just gonna wipe off my Buxom lip gloss I've been wearing. Hoping that it's done its job of plumping my lips. <laughs> and I am using a Huggies wet wipe. Um, if you go straight in with a Kleenex, sometimes those glosses will pick up little lint and ugh. Then it's in your lipstick all day drive you crazy. All right, so now I'm just so excited. My friend, my BFF, gave me this amazing gift on my birthday. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick in the color Pillow Talk. Oh, it's so beautiful and I just feel just so special because I know it's a very expensive lipstick. And then I'm going to pair it with the ultra cheap lip liner <laughs> in NYX and this is soft spoken. This is like the perfect shade to go with it.
All right, guys, so here's the finished look. I just love how these bright pinks and purples really make my green eyes stand out. So I think this is gonna be a look that I wear a lot this summer. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Thanks for coming along with me, getting ready with me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.